Everybody wants to leave their mark on society. Everybody wants to contribute. Something that lives beyond them. Something that they'll be remembered for. These people went a different route. What is your favorite, and that's why we had to put this sign up story? Story one. Not a sign, but... I was going through a military school in Alabama when a classmate asked for a ride to a local bar so she could line dance. It was her preferred exercise and she was jonesing, so I took her, being the only person available with a POV, privately owned vehicle. She danced for a couple of hours. Teach a new line dance night on a Wednesday, as I recall. Then I said it was time to go back to our lodging, because I was tired. I added that I would be leaving town that weekend, but I'd noticed a mechanical bull in the corner. It was just sitting there that night, but I bet they had it going on the weekend, and all she had to do was tell the fighter pilots in the room about the mechanical bull, and she would have a ride to the bar to line dance to her heart's content that weekend. She agreed it was a good idea. I came back Monday morning and was met by a couple of greetings that went something like, Did you hear about James? I said, No, and they said they had to hurry, but we could talk later. I caught the third person who said that and asked what specifically had happened. She began with, Well, see, Amy suggested this great bar across town where there was a mechanical bull. Turns out, James had ridden well and long, being fairly athletic and not having had much to drink, and they had cranked up the volume, if you follow. He'd been doing great until his right foot had become wedged between the pedestal and the saddle at precisely the moment he had pitched his body left to counterbalance the buck of the saddle, and snap, snap. Anyways, in a roundabout way, thanks to me, the Air Force now includes mechanical bull on their list of risky or dangerous activities. The military has a list of dangerous activities? Are you prohibited from participating in these activities? It seems like the list should start with being military. Not prohibited so much as you need approval from your commander and a nice piece of paper that says you have it. Yeah, that makes sense. I suspect if that wasn't in place, people would do all sorts of stuff to try and get out of the army. They could always say, hey, I was just trying to have a good time. I haven't even seen this leg snap and I'm already cringing at the thought. Story 2. Through my cousin, who managed a restaurant for years. On the hostess stand at the front, they had a sign that said, We smoke our meats with premium applewood. A small bowl of the wood chips they used was placed right in front of it. The amount of people who would take a wood chip and try to eat it were staggering. It got to the point they had to keep a bag of the wood chips in the cabinet of the hostess stand. People would sometimes put them in their mouth and spit it out embarrassed and try to cover it up. Some would laugh and say, I shouldn't have had that last drink. Others would turn around, double down, and try to give the saliva-covered chip to the hostess, then complain that these mints are disgusting. So now there is another sign beside the bowl that says, Wood chips. Do not eat in red letters. Makes for fun conversation every night for the hostesses seating people who are new to the restaurant. Unfortunately, they still need to keep an extra bag of wood chips in the stand, and people still think they look like a great after-dinner snack. Now, when the Double Downers complain, the hostess just points to the sign and laughs. People never cease to amaze. What do you mean? It's a chip, ain't it? If I can eat potato chips and corn chips and apple chips, why can't I eat applewood chips? I'm suing. Paint chips are the best chips. Surely there has to be a better way to demonstrate the smell of applewood. Are these chips meant to be souvenirs? Sounds like the restaurant is doubling down on still bringing out these applewood chips. If so many people are eating them, why not just have a piece of wood that smells like applewood? Then you could just have a sign that says, hey, give this a smell. Unless you're afraid someone's going to try and stick it in their mouth, light it up, and smoke it. Story 3. From my father. He was eating at a seafood restaurant and had to pee. There was a sign on the door to the bathroom that said something like, if you ate this dish, then wash your hands before using the bathroom. My father, being male, and my father laughed it off and stepped inside to use the urinal. There was a moment when he was peeing and fine, and then there came the moment when he felt like his peen was on fire. So he ran to the sinks and started splashing water on his junk, which also splashed his face. So he, in a very Home Alone style, 
grabbed his face in an OMG fashion, which then started to burn his eyes. So he was there for a very long time, splashing water up and down trying to control the burn. Eventually, he returned to the table, paid, and left. Obviously, there was a reason why the sign existed, and he was just an extension of it. Hatch, New Mexico is famous for its chili peppers. People make pilgrimages from all over the country to buy them. If you've never had Hatch chili pepper, seriously, go get some now. They're friggin' awesome. If you go there on your own personal pepper pilgrimage, you'll notice that a few of the pepper vendors have signs in their bathrooms that read, Wash hands before using the facilities. A lot of tourists, including me, learned that lesson the hard way. I'd spent most of the morning handling peppers, sampling pepper jellies, pepper gummies, tasting pepper-infused wine, etc. I went to the bathroom, whipped out Mr. Happy, and proceeded to do my business. Let's just say that Hatch Chili Peppers have a little heat on them. I think the only reason I know not to touch your face when I've just touched Chili Peppers is from the YouTube show Hot Ones. If you've never seen it, it's great. Celebrities eat chicken wings with increasingly hotter hot sauce on them while answering questions. There was an older show I loved on YouTube, too, called Hot Pepper Gaming. People would review video games, but first they would eat a chili pepper, usually one of the very hotter ones. They had to get through the whole review before they were allowed to drink water or milk. Story 4. I work in an office in the bathroom. We have a sign that says, Please, don't flush printer paper. Throw your divorce papers in the trash. Now, every time someone in our office has to use the bathroom, we say, I gotta go flush the divorce papers. When I was in the fourth grade during art class, I drew a Minecraft creeper drawing on construction paper. Later, me and my friends went to use the bathroom, and I still had the drawing in my hands. So I decided to lay the drawing into the urinal just to be funny. Then, one of my friends flushed the urinal. The paper didn't let the water go through the hole of the urinal, so we decided to start flushing it over and over, and the water began to overflow the bowl and onto the floor. Then, one of the teachers got suspicious to why she heard laughing and yelling in the bathroom. She came in and saw what we were doing, and went out and told every adult she could see, and more teachers came in and took us into the principal's office. We all blamed it on each other. And most of us got suspended, including me. Fourth grade. Minecraft Creeper. I'm sorry, I just can't get past this. Story 5. My husband and I moved into our first home. It was a completely renovated, amazingly cool house. We knew the previous owner flipped it, and it was a bona fide bachelor pad. Leather bar, pinball machine, blue under lighting in the kitchens and bathroom, hot tub, the whole nine yards. A few weeks after moving in, we noticed people kept stopping by the house asking for Alex. We told them he didn't live here anymore, and they would always ask if we had his new address. They were nice enough, but it was starting to get annoying. On Tuesday evening around 11, we were falling asleep on the couch, and all of a sudden some guy strung out appeared in our living room. He opened the sliding door right next to us and walked in asking for Alex. My husband stood up and was like, what the hell? Alex doesn't live here anymore. Tell all your friends. And the guy left. We learned the next day from our neighbor that Alex was the local pharmaceutical kingpin in the area and frequently had his unsavory clientele over to pick up product here at all hours of the day or night. That weekend, we put up a sign that said, Alex doesn't live here. Went out and got a massive Rottweiler. We named him Alex. Well, where the hell did your dog live? Alex didn't live in that house. He got his own dog house all to his own. Story 6. My stepdad worked at a shipping yard, and they had to put cylindrical tanks in one of two spots, indicating whether they were full of gas or empty. So one day, the boss asks a guy to wield two signs, one that says full, and the other saying empty. This guy wasn't all there, and he did create the signs and showed them off to his boss. The first one was well made. Full, it said. The second one, M-T. They all found it so funny they kept it that way. There was a bad habit among the shop workers of my area, at least. When an oxygen or acetylene bottle is empty, they take a paint marker and write M-T on the tank. 
It's really obnoxious because those tanks get reused all the time, so when they come back full, it's still red MT. We had one guy get written up because he took a wire wheel brush on a grinder to erase it. It was acetylene, and it was very much full. Don't take power tools to explosive tanks, kids. It's an absolute dumb move. Idea. Use chalk. It stays on while you need it, but comes off easily. At some point, I thought the story was going to go bad because someone mistook MT for something else. I'm glad it was just the issue about the tanks getting marked wrong. But I also think you just need to be cautious around any tank, whatever it's labeled. Even if your shop is completely fastidious about how these things are named, you shouldn't do anything to them that would cause them to explode in any way, just to be safe. Story 7 Back when I was a kid, there was a roadside park we picnicked at where a guy chasing a frisbee jumped a fence, not realizing that those were not bushes on the other side, but the tops of trees growing from the base of a 30-foot cliff. So anyway, that's how that park came to have signs every 10 feet on the fence warning of the drop. A couple of guys, I know one of them, did this in our city at a ramp for underground parking for the law courts. They were drunk and decided that they could jump the hedge in front of them. Broken ankles for everyone. Sadly, they sued and won over lack of signage. I still think dumb is its own reward. Edit. I didn't mention the height of the hedge. It wasn't like a three-foot little decoration. This was chest level in front of the cement guardrail. All in all, an impressive leap. Story 8. His first day of kindergarten... My brother thought he could escape during recess by trying to climb this massive chain-link fence. He got up about eight feet before the lunch ladies noticed and disciplined him. The aide sent him to the principal's office where he questioned why he did it. My little smart-mouthed five-year-old brother replied that there was no sign that said you can't climb it. There is now a sign. At a seminar on new colostomy supplies, there was a sticker on the colostomy bag collar the part your modified intestine sticks through, stating that the colostomy was not to be used for spicy pleasure. I don't know the backstory, but according to a doctor I know, it's disturbingly common for people to catch STDs in their colostomy hole because, uh, well, I had to learn that so y'all do too. How do I unlearn something? Story 9. We had to place a no hanging around outside sign up because the teenagers did not know what no loitering meant. I work in private security. I once upon a time had to ask a group of people hanging out in a hospital parking garage to leave. They asked why. I said we had a policy of no loitering in the garage due to some issues we had been having with break-ins. Their response was, we ain't loitering, we're just waiting around. I had a friend in high school who thought loitering was just another word for littering, which sort of makes sense if you know the area. There's a very specific accent to the area that I can't really explain. The words high tide is a good example, though. It's pronounced hoi toid, like the center sound is a British pay attention oi instead of a hard I. So litter to loiter isn't as big a stretch as you would think. He'd lived there all his life, and I was from off so I got to explain the difference. Weird day. It's interesting how signs have to evolve. Is there some point where police officers or a judge has to say, understanding this sign is your own responsibility? Or do we have to keep changing the signs because people keep challenging it mentally? It's like watching human intelligence in correlation to the signs and how they've evolved. Story 10. They had to put up a large sign at a local nursing home saying basically don't let people out the door to outside without checking with staff. Evidently, a resident in a gown and wheelchair asked a visitor to hold the door with an alarm and a keypad slash code to open, open for them, and the person did. The staff ran out and got the patient at the end of the driveway about to push into traffic. The visitor actually said, I didn't know she wasn't allowed out. This is a second or third-hand story, so I don't know the validity. 
I have heard of some retirement homes that will have a bus stop built on the sidewalk between the main building and the road, and it has a big sign saying bus stop on it. So if a person slips out, they often would get to the bus stop and then sit down to wait for the bus. Staff would keep an eye on the bus stop and round up anybody that was out there waiting for the bus. The real bus stop was on the street, and you had to walk a little bit further to get to it. I feel bad for the lost elderly tourist who was rounded up at the bus stop and dragged into the nursing home. Story 11. My favorite, mostly because it happened to me, but not because it was a great experience. When I was about six, we lived across the street from a park, and my sister and I would go play over there all the time, of course. On this particular summer day, we had our best friends over, who also happened to be sisters. My best friend and I decide to go back across the street to get some popsicles, and my mother is across the street to supervise the crossing. This was a useless effort, because I had stepped between the cars parked on my side of the street to check if the coast was clear. I was too short to see over them, and I got hit by a car. I was in the hospital for a month because my skull was cracked, for the second time in my life. Anyway, after that, they put up a sign that said, Slow Children at Play. We moved shortly after all this, but it's still there, and whenever I pass it, I'm reminded that it's there because of me. If only you hadn't been such a slow child. Edit. Really? You'd guild this? Slow children indeed. Story 12. So for some reason in my neighborhood, people systematically seem to target our mailbox when they're out walking their dogs. Their dogs need to pee. This has built into an issue, as it has rotted the wood out, and we've already replaced the post once because of this. So we've put up a big flamboyant sign that reads, Warning! Chemically treated. Hazardous to animals. It's done its job. And, of course, there's no actual hazard. Edit. Forgot to mention, it's not just the mailbox that suffers. My brothers and I planted several flowers in small bushes for my mother that had meaning to her. These have all unfortunately died due to the neighbors, despite our attempts to keep them alive. I can understand that last part. My mom enjoys gardening, too. She loves to grow flowers and certain things in the backyard. I know she'd be devastated if there were dogs coming over and weeing on the flowers the whole time and not allowing anything to grow. It's a good thing we don't have anything like that going on. I can understand how they want to protect those flowers and the mailbox post. Story 13. Three times over the winter, I took my kid to the zoo, and there was a volunteer standing at a certain spot of the gorilla enclosure showing one of the gorilla's videos on her phone. He was very interested in videos of other gorillas, and it was mental stimulation for him, she would tell us. The gorilla would sit very close to the glass to see her phone. She was dressed just like a volunteer, and talked like one too. Turns out, she wasn't a volunteer. Turns out, watching YouTube is bad for gorillas. There is now a sign saying, Don't show videos to the gorillas. It has a negative impact on their relationship with their family. Story 14. Was chatting with students in the lounge area when all of a sudden we hear an incredibly loud bang. Turns out that another new student had been texting while walking to our center's demo room and totally missed the fact that the room's walls are all panes of glass. So she immediately face planted in front of me and my group. Not the first time this has happened, but this was enough to warrant a caution, glass ahead sign. There's a glass door in a control tower at Miami International Airport that has a caution door sign on it for similar reasons. I was the one who walked into it. Story 15. At the college I went to, there was a sign on the men's bathroom in one building that said, Please do not use your feet to flush the toilets, because some dude drop-kicked a toilet in an attempt to flush it. I've never laughed so hard reading a sign in my life. At a previous workplace? Please do not put toilet paper in the urinal. With a graffitied addition, no TP, just PP. I'm a little confused as to why this sign was needed. I had a work order generated for wall toilet leaking. Figured it was a lady who called it in, or a wall-mounted toilet. Nope. The guy was working and was able to walk us right to the urinal that was having issues. Maybe he's the one putting TP in the wall toilets. I don't think I've ever heard of a urinal called a wall toilet. 
Kind of makes sense. But now that I think about it, I don't think it would be a very good idea. Calling it a toilet would probably mean to some people that they could use it for everything and not just pee-pee. You'd have too many more unfortunate accidents. Messier accidents to clean up. And that would require a whole new sign. Story 16. One day I noticed that they had drained, cleaned, and refilled the pool at my apartment complex. A few days later, I noticed a new sign on the pool area gate that said, Persons with active diarrhea or who have had diarrhea in the past 48 hours are not permitted to enter the pool. I've also seen this sign at spas. People be nasty. The drop-off laundry service in my neighborhood put up a sign that said they are no longer accepting underwear. It's a laundry, a business built on dirty clothing. How nasty was those drawers that they had to freaking change their policy? Story 17. Not necessarily a sign we put up, but worked with an assistant manager at Sonic who had poured degreaser in her drink and proceeded to drink it to claim that someone had tried poisoning her. And, of course, upon reviewing the infamous non-working camera system and watching her poison herself, every employee at that point had to sign paperwork stating we would not drink cleaning chemicals. Edit. I originally put Sonic, but it was actually Subway. I worked for Sonic afterwards. I promise not to poison myself on company property. Rule 18. Self-unaliving attempts are to be made after clocking out and leaving the building. No exceptions. Story 18. There is a sign on the way to my grandparents' house that had a picture of a cow falling off of a cliff to a car because there is a cattle field on the cliff above the road. At least three cows have fallen to there and an unlucky driver's expiration. I don't see what use the sign is, though. Being aware of the potential for falling cows doesn't help you avoid them. When you see an actual cow falling off the cliff, your first reaction will be to gawk at it. Wow, look at that! It's a falling cow! The sign preps your mind to understand that cows can fall off the cliff above you and may hit your car. When a prepared person sees a falling cow, they will react differently. I can see that making sense. You can't be aware of what you don't know about. Nobody expects a falling cow or the Spanish Inquisition. Story 19. Someone pooped in a urinal every block over the course of two weeks without anyone noticing. After it was cleaned, a sign was put up saying, Please do not put things in the urinal. The sign was promptly found in the urinal. One day before I became a manager at my McDee's, I found poop all over the urinal, up the sides and everything, like right before I was supposed to clock out. I didn't say anything and clocked out on time. Story 20. Near my old city, there was a street sign that roughly said, when translated, don't cross here, you could perish. Eventually, it became, don't cross here, someone already perished. Saw a sign like that near a waterfall on our honeymoon. It said something to the effect of, 15 people have expired here after leaving the path and falling on the slippery rocks. Definitely got my attention. It really shines brightest when the number has been crossed out and replaced by hand. Story 21. I live in Vancouver, where the incident happened where the sea lion grabbed that girl and dragged her underwater and the grandpa had to save her. In the area where that happened, there's a sign that says, No feeding the sea lions, as a visual depiction. Haven't been back in a while, but I'm pretty sure it's still there. Yes, I noticed the signs appeared there shortly afterwards. I'm from Richmond. Story 22. Door to boiler room sucks. If you close it fully, the maintenance guy literally has to crowbar it open. I'm the maintenance guy. Now there's a sign that says, Do not close door completely or maintenance literally has to crowbar it open. Perhaps the maintenance guy could fix the door? Whoa there, Satan. Story 23. The other day, a woman was tanning in the middle of a shooting range. I think some new signs will be made. Jeez, what the hell was the range safety doing? Ready on the right? Right is ready. Ready on the left? Left is tanning. When you want to get a nice tan, but also high-key want to perish. Story 24. 
We had to put up a sign a few years back at my job on one of those automated sample machines. It was dispensing small tins of Caesar's dog food, very clearly advertised as such. And a woman approached myself and a co-worker asking us why she and her two children just ate dog food. I felt the only response to her was, because you fed it to them. Management didn't approve of that answer, so we had to put up a sign. Story 25 was signing a lease for an apartment in college. The landlord mentioned, you'll probably see some funny things in there. The one I had to ask about said something to the effect of, Lessee shall agree to not run internal combustion engines inside the dwelling. The landlord started putting that in his leases after walking in on a guy working on and running his motorcycle in the middle of his living room. Story 26. Once, a toilet was so severely clogged, they tried everything, but it was impossible to fix it. So plumbers came and opened the whole pipe to fix it. Surprisingly, a slipper was found inside the toilet, and no one knew what happened to the slipper to be found inside a toilet pipe. So they posted the sign saying not to flush anything except what to be expected to flush. Story 27. I work at the dining hall at my university and was cleaning the salad bar when I noticed a small fire coming from our toaster oven. After running to find my manager, we eventually put it out. Turns out some guy stuck a piece of pie in there with a paper plate and the entire thing burst into flames. Please, only put bread in the toaster, became the new sign. Story 28. We have a rule at our pool that in the sauna you can't exercise. One man constantly works out in the sauna. I used to go to a gym where a lady would regularly do naked yoga in the sauna. I guess she wanted to do hot yoga and the gym didn't offer it. That is a power move. Story 29. There's this knick-knack shop in my hometown that has a decorative basket of colorful beads, soaps, or whatever, and above it they had this sign that said, Do not eat. Because years ago, there was some kid that tried to eat them and kept popping them into his mouth one after the other. I was like five, and they looked like some dope old candy. Don't you judge me. Story 30. People massively bringing dogs to the park despite of a big no dogs sign. The locals say the sign is too high and dogs cannot see it. But dogs actually can look up, so they should know better. Oh, sure, and the shotgun in the Winchester is real. Story 31. We have a sign on our fuel island, raised concrete with the fuel pumps on it, that you cannot walk on it to get across. You have to walk around. Someone was going to walk across it, fell, and broke their hip. Also, there's now a fence to stop you. Story 32. Mainland Chinese tourists pooping in and around the Louvre. They had to put signs up in Mandarin that says that these areas are not placed to defecate. As someone from mainland China, I'm almost always disgusted by our country's tourists. Story 33. Once, we had a guy near the pool feed seagulls. So now the hotel I work at has a no seagulls allowed sign near the pools. Seagulls are illiterate jerkwads. I doubt that'll stop them. Story 34. It's not really a unique situation, but one of my favorite bars has signs in the bathroom that say, We don't poop in your art box. Don't art in our poop box. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.